assessment you are supposed to conduct the risk assessment for cb raman guest house or a possible threat of vehicle explosion this was the statement so for those who have recently joined i will just give a brief overview what is a risk so those who have already attended my lecture maybe i can ask them so risk is basically nothing but it is a combination of three factors first factor is threat second factor is the impact of that particular threat and third factor is vulnerability of the structure for that particular hazard or impact so maybe those who have already attended uh, attended uh, my lecture on this risk assessment can someone explain uh, the difference clear difference between threat impact and vulnerability my pal hello yes sir yes sir so a uh, threat is potential source, source of damage impact is the effect of damage effect of that threat and vulnerability is the that we can say the combination of threat and uh, this uh, uh, structure characteristics okay so maybe uh, it would have been better if uh, some basic example can also be given anyone else apart from my pal shiva sir yes can you give the example of the three cases threat impact and vulnerability ah yes sir uh, if a explosion is uh, occurred at a distance from a structure it will if the structure is nearer to that explosion it will be uh, vulnerable sir uh, because it is exposed to that uh, area so some impact will be uh, acting on that structure due to that explosion then what is threat that threat is that potential of that uh, explosion sir it will uh, cause some uh, damage to that structure you, that is no uh, that will be considered as a threat mm, i am not sure that if you could understand what uh, was explained so maybe i will uh, again explain everything just to make sure that all of you understand so threat is basically you can say the the source of particular problem you can say understand threat for example seismic threat blast threat nuclear threat explosion uh, and uh, biological threat radiological threat chemical threat so threats are basically different kind of sources different kind of uh, scenarios which can cause some impact or some damage or some hazard to the structure so those will be considered under the threat potential threats for example uh, if you remember i gave one exercise in that exercise uh, you were asked to list the potential threats in different states in india for example there were some threats in jnk there were some threats in arunachal pradesh there were some threats in himachal pradesh so all of you wrote different different threats avalanche flood uh, earthquake terrorism explosion accidental explosion fire and uh, so many things wrote and there was one answer script which was very good and i was expecting the same kind of answer from everyone so in one answer script only one person he very clearly wrote what are the possibilities of those different threats so the idea is at some locations there can be high threat of explosion but lesser threat of earthquake or maybe high threat of explosion and high threat of earthquake but maybe less threat of avalanche for example if you go to south india 
so what is the threat for avalanche there is no threat of avalanche because there is no mountain no ice no snow so how there can be a threat of avalanche so threats are these different sources of problem for example but if you go in south india there can be a threat of tsunami there can be threat of uh, accidental explosion on the port what happened in behrut so behrut was on the port so there were ships in those ships there were hazardous chemicals explosive chemicals so that was a potential threat for the behrut if they would have done that risk assessment that accident would have been stopped or maybe if not stopped at least the damage that happened in behrut would have been taken care of easily so that's why risk assessment is very important when we want to make some decisions when we want as an engineer as an uh, administrator we want to uh, assess the risk and make the decisions for creating facilities creating shelters or as a civil engineer we need to assess the risk so that we can design our structures accordingly so threat is basically you can understand in the way what kind of loading may occur on the structure and what is the probability of occurrence of that particular uh, loading now there is a second term that is impact hazard for example earthquake may cause certain kind of hazard certain kind of loading on the structure blast as we saw in the last class that blast loading uh, can cause pressures on the structure pressure time history we were plotting so that is basically a hazard or impact of particular blast load on the structure similarly when we talk about earthquakes so earthquake will cause certain hazard on the structure certain impact on the structure there are ways to measure that particular hazard for example in uh, is1893 which is the code for designing earthquake resistant structures there is given this response spectra so response spectra is you can understand maybe a kind of hazard because of that particular earthquake that can happen and for that particular hazard we should design our structures and then there comes the third term that is vulnerability so vulnerability vulnerability tells how vulnerable is your structure to a particular threat that comes under the structural characteristics for example if your building is l shaped or if your building is v shaped so those buildings may be architecturally may be more vulnerable to the earthquakes because there are some corners some joints so uh, this vulnerability is basically something which tells how weak your structure is maybe there are cases of soft story soft story uh, or maybe there are cases of uh, a building in which there is no particular boundary so that if there is no boundary that will be more vulnerable to terrorist attack compared to a building which has a proper boundary proper guards are there security is there so that building will will be less vulnerable so by multiplying all these factors we get a total idea of the risk and the project that i have given in that particular project you have to basically assess the risk of particular threat so i have already defined the threat the threat is vehicle bomb now you have to for that given threat you have to check the impact and the vulnerability so if you see that model on model i have uploaded very clearly this fema 456 on tutorial for uh, risk assessment in this uh, particular uh, section 
I have uploaded uh, this FEMA 456, which is a very useful uh, manual to do the risk assessment, terrorism risk assessment. And that's what you are supposed to do in this particular project. So when you will open this FEMA 456, you will, it will look something like this, risk assessment. So this is a 248 pages report. Now the question comes, do you have time to read the complete report? Because suppose those who are in MTech or those who are in PhD, those who are going to get placed or they are going to attend some office or some construction office or some institute. So at some point of time, you will be assigned so much of work that you will not have time to go through in the details of all the things. So you have to develop an art where you can very carefully select the items which you really want to focus and do your work. So this assignment, the purpose of this assignment was, is to carefully select the items which you need to do for, uh, which you need to use for assessing the risk of uh, terrorism attack on CBR guest house in form of vehicle bomb. So how will you proceed? So I thought it may be a good idea if I give you a basic idea how this risk assessment uh, should be done. So maybe now uh, soon most of you will be back to the campus and after that I will decide the deadline for this project and then you can collectively do the risk assessment. One more thing I wanted to suggest that there is no correct answer and there is no wrong answer. It is a subjective assessment. It gives your, it, it will help in your engineering decision making. This is a complete subjective engineering judgment and you don't need to worry about what is wrong answer, what is right answer. There is nothing wrong, nothing right. There is, everything is a decision based upon your capability. So in this risk assessment uh, manual, when you will see, so if you come here, they have very clearly uh, told you that asset value assessment, the, you have to assess how valuable are your assets. So basically this will help you in checking the impact and the hazard, what is going to happen if you lose that particular structure. And then how vulnerable is your particular structure that is CVR guest house. And then you have to do the risk assessment. And threat identification you can check, but I, as I have already given in the statement that you have to assume the threat is vehicle bomb. So maybe you can leave this one because that threat has already been defined for one particular threat we are doing it. So you have to focus only on step two, the asset value assessment and step three, the vulnerability assessment. How vulnerable is your structure? So now how you will do? So you see, for example, I will search control F table, for example, determining the asset value rating, this one, right? So we go directly to task 2.4, determining the asset value rating. No, it is not doing okay. So there should be a table. So here asset value rating, asset value assessment. If you go in this one, they will refer you to a software, but in this course we are not using this software, we have to do it manually. So here you will see uh, there are different kind of uh, defense layers are defined, first layer of defense. So for example, lack of fencing and physical barriers. So what idea is that you have to check, for example, lack of fencing and physical barriers. So you will check whether there is a fencing or physical barrier is present in that particular structure that you have to go and physically check and click the photograph and understand that. So here for vehicle bomb, 
for vehicle bomb which we are assessing in this particular project so they are saying that lack of fencing and physical barrier it is important if there is no fencing no physical barrier then it can be a problem that that comes under the first layer of defense so like that very systematically you have to collect all this data in this form of tables and then you will understand how you collect the data on the field and how that data can be used in risk assessment so there are so many tables like that that's why i have given this assignment in a group so in a group you can divide the divide the responsibility one team will collect one particular data one team will collect one particular data another team will collect another particular data and then you sit together and define a risk rating so that will be very a very interesting exercise and this will give you a very good idea of risk assessment all, and all those things for example let me show you some more items here in this particular manual so the idea is no need to go much into the theory just directly see these tables how they have done this rating for example here in this asset value so if uh, asset value is very high they are given a rating of 10 so you have to follow this rating chart for example if there is a some very heavy equipment or some say very important thing is there which may be very high cost so you will assign very high asset value so like that you have to go through all the tables given in this manual and and uh, it will be very interesting once you start doing this exercise you will really love it because it will give you it will open your it will broaden your horizon uh, to look at the structure from viewpoint as an administrator till now you have learnt engineering aspect but now you will understand uh, more than the engineering the decision making aspect which is also very important in the life of uh, civil engineers for example now we come to the vulnerability assessment and uh, let me show you some interesting table here also just which will give a rough idea uh, this is criteria okay okay for example so they are preparing the assessment agenda so see very interesting table so in this assessment you can create these tables in your uh, project for example you just check the structural systems what kind of structural system is present in the cv raman guest house for example the location of columns the location of beams how they have been designed or maybe what are their rough dimensions i am not expecting you to go with a measuring tape measure and everything no i am not expecting that just get a very rough engineering idea of the structural system if you can have a architectural drawing the rough idea of the columns it will be really interesting to see the kind of envelope system the kind of utility system mechanical systems in the building plumbing systems if you can do that i am not expecting that you will uh, complete it fully but at least if you can be more imaginative and more uh, 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 what we say uh, if you will take more interest in that then uh, for example let me show you more tables which will give you a more better idea how to collect the data um, let me say for example yeah, these are preliminary investigations maybe because there are so many tables so among your groups to each individual you can give a responsibility that one person will take care of particular questions so for example here they are asking the vulnerability questions let me yeah, zoom it vulnerable question so for example see very good what is the source of water for the fire suppression system local utility company lines storage tanks with utility okay so maybe uh, you can identify suppose if there is, a, there is a fire due to that blast so is there a system is there for fire suppression and how many at how many locations it is there or suppose sometimes the fire suppression system can be very deep inside the building so suppose if the fire has been caught and someone has to go very deep inside the building so that may not be a good location 
for putting the utility system right so those kind of things should come to your mind or maybe uh, what i am suggesting maybe out of uh, this uh, vulnerability assessment uh, we can publish a one paper out of this particular class so all of you will be the co-authors maybe 10 co-authors with 10 co-authors we can communicate a paper in that particular paper we can write that uh, we have done this study on a particular building and uh, these are the different different uh, uh, ways to calculate the data so that will be a very good uh, case study for uh, engineers to understand the way it has been collected so because we are doing it in a group a big group if possible we can communicate this as a publication i don't see any issue with that so then all of us will be co-authors 10 co-authors in this paper so the but it will depend how actively you participate how actively you think about this now let me show you more examples for example um, so if you go more beyond this so these people are doing with some software but here we are not going to use any software because these are simple calculations you can do by your excel sheet also even uh, for future you can develop a complete database um, let me see if they have some other tables also to explain so nothing so now we have come to an end so like this you have to see what are the tables available what data needs to be collected you divide your team and then take the decision so uh, for the students who have uh, maybe recently joined so at least this gives some idea of that project assignment now you discuss among yourself make your team and slowly slowly at least see uh, maybe you do not you are not in the campus but you can start working on this project you can share this uh, fema 456 among yourself and uh, then you can discuss how you will plan the data how you will collect the data which particular tables who will look after like that you can do and then slowly slowly you will understand and at the last moment you will not have much pressure to complete the project and maybe you can do a very really good work if it is a good work you should publish it and uh, i strongly recommend that if uh, this paper can, uh, come, can come out of this entire class this will be a completely uh, new kind of scenario out of a teaching class so that i think because mtech students uh, ms phd all mature students are uh, present in this class so we should try to do something more uh, interesting in this particular course so that was the idea to introduce uh, this particular thing i thought it will be good uh, to give an idea uh, i will cover this in a recap lecture again for the students uh, who have recently uh, joined now i am coming to the second thing because uh, so now i want to know how many of you have uh, already uh, started attempting this assignment which i was discussing in the last class uh, just can anyone give me some idea are you comfortable with the assignment that i was discussing in the last class yes. anyone so uh, okay so who is thinking that he needs more time to to uh, uh, to do this assignment because the, why i am asking i will come to the reason uh, later uh, please tell me don't no, no no need to worry just tell me very frankly uh, if you need more time because uh, that uh, that will help me in making the decision for the decisions because uh, after this assignment because this till now what you calculated uh, that was for the chemical explosion right that papers that I circulated for which you have to calculate the over pressure time history that was for the chemical explosion. But my next target is to compute for the nuclear explosion and then compare the over pressure time history 
for nuclear explosion with the chemical explosion so once you have completed this then i can give uh, yes my pal please uh, sir so in this assignment only the uh, code to uh, develop the this threadlander times tree that was the required right in this correct side. correct correct okay okay so uh, the idea is uh, maybe i will uh, tell you the entire picture i want you to develop your own code for calculating the incident air over pressure so once you have developed this code uh, there will be exercise based on that particular code in future because in future when we we will come to calculate the structural response then i am not going to give you the loading i will ask please use the same code what you developed in this exercise to calculate the load and then for that particular load please do the structural analysis that's what is my plan that's what i want to do so that's why we will work on a blast engineering problem in block by block step by step that's why the first step is that you should be able to compute the loading over pressure and also we will compute the loading because of a nuclear over pressure nuclear over pressures are nuclear explosions are very high magnitude explosions and then they create lot of energy they uh, cause very high over pressures compared to the chemical explosions so we need to cross check how much difference is there so for that i will supply you uh, i will tell you how to compute nuclear over pressures the equations that i was discussing in the last class those are not for the nuclear explosions those are only for the chemical explosions but for nuclear explosions it is very difficult to find the such simple equations for nuclear explosions uh, i i do not i cannot uh, maybe i will check i will let you know how the equation for a nuclear explosion looks like then i think only you can appreciate uh, let me check hmm. uh, maybe i will quickly check and i will let you know uh, how the nuclear explosion equation looks like hmm. okay so let me show you in a graph so see you see this uh, right so in nuclear explosions it starts from here so there is a asc manual number 42 which was published in 1985 but it is being still used for designing the structures to register the nuclear weapon effects so uh, peak over pressures how do we calculate in nuclear case so yesterday you saw in case of chemical explosion there was a very simple equation in terms of uh, uh, scaled distance right in the case of nuclear explosion we also account for the height of explosion because nuclear explosions are generally uh, have been uh, done in the past through a particular height by dropping through an airplane or something like that so those equations are developed and the equations start from here 3.9 okay and then they start going like this you see so all these analytical expressions you have to compute before finally reaching to the air over pressure history and for air over over pressure history it again starts so we started from 3. Point, uh, we started from 3.9 and now we are going till we keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going all these equations you see keep going keep going keep going keep going and till 3.34 so those many equations are required before you can finally get your uh, nuclear uh over pressure because that is a very complicated phenomenon so what i was expecting that 
uh, I do not expect that you will write all these equations in MATLAB and uh, I will not give you that uh, assignment because that is the research problem. But I have already developed a MATLAB code for writing all those equations and I will share that subroutine with you to calculate the nuclear overpressure. So your job will be simply to compare the nuclear overpressure with the chemical overpressure. So chemical overpressure you are developing, nuclear overpressure I have developed, I will share with you and then you can compare both of them and then you can understand the difference between the chemical explosions and nuclear explosions. So, but before that you have to complete the chemical explosion uh, uh, thing, only then I can move ahead. So maybe I will wait more once all of you have uh, completed that MATLAB assignment, then I will give this uh, new assignment which is for the yes my pal uh, sir in these equations that we are uh, studying for the chemical explosions yes, yes. Uh, i have not seen any expression for the arrival time yes that is also important for a time history very good very good so as i already discussed as i already discussed with uh, in the last lecture that generally we are interested in the response of the structure once the blast wave has arrived so once the blast wave has arrived uh, after that only we are focusing so that's why people have not focused much on the arrival time in the case of uh, nuclear explosion but but if there are multiple explosions so there will be multiple arrival times and then calculation of arrival time becomes very important because there will be multiple waves first wave then due to second explosion there will be some waves so there will be some delay between the explosions then arrival times become very important certainly if you will try in the literature you can find uh, some empirical equations and some theory for calculating the arrival time but in this particular course because we are just introducing this blast engineering uh, i have considered those papers and in these papers maybe you are not able to find this uh, arrival time that is the reason behind but certainly, if you do more literature review, uh, there uh, you will uh, you should be able to find the arrival time. For example, in the nuclear case, uh, you will find the arrival time. But we have ignored it, uh, assuming that we are interested only when the wave has already arrived, and then there is a single explosion. Okay. So now we are moving ahead uh, so i hope once you complete then i can discuss all those things uh, before that there is no point in discussing now maybe i can start with the next lecture mm. okay there is lectures so that will be your uh, I have not uh, disclosed it yet, but that will be your take home exam. Uh, once you compute your uh, chemical overpressure history, so for particular given yield and height of burst, you have to calculate the nuclear over, over overpressure history at a distance of 200 meter from ground zero, for which you will be supplied a MATLAB subroutine to compute nuclear overpressure. And you have to calculate air overpressure history using kidney gram equations at the same point which you have already developed in previous exercise and then you will be required to compare the two overpressure time histories and then you will be asked to comment on that so this exercise uh, i have not given yet and i will give only when you are able to complete the uh, this exercise okay now we will start with the uh, fifth lecture which is on internal explosion so till now we have discussed uh, explosion in air air blast it was in the atmosphere completely open shock waves are propagating they are uh, interacting with the ground and reflecting and then they are interacting with each other and after that they are interacting with the structure they are applying some loads now we consider a scenario for example there is a explosion inside a building 
or suppose there is a explosion in uh, in some suppose chemical factory or some gas factory gas uh, where gas work is going on for example uh, there are some uh, petrochemical industries right there can be explosion within the factory itself within the structure itself those are considered as uh, internal explosions and in this particular lecture we will see what will happen if the explosion happens uh, inside the building and uh, that's what we are planning to understand in this particular lecture and this is also very important uh, while designing the facilities for petrochemical or uh, maybe suppose if there is a factory for uh, keeping the arms and ammunition for example DIDO facilities uh, which are involved in developing different kind of bombs or different kind of uh, uh, explosives so we should always consider the criteria of internal explosion uh, when designing such structures even uh, in the army facilities where uh, weapon storage is there there can be a possibility of internal explosion and we should uh, give due consideration to such internal explosions uh, in all such facilities so that's how that's why we should uh, focus on this aspect also of the explosion so first we have to understand what is the environment of internal explosion how the things how the load will occur how the blast waves will move how the shock pressure will build up so first thing is we have to understand these things in a very intuitive way once we have under understood all those things in an intuitive way then we can uh, understand the mathematics also we can do the mathematics also so we will go step by step and we will understand what is happening so there is a shock pressure phase you will understand what is that shock pressure phase slowly uh, shock pressure phase means suppose explosion has happened so just after the explosion inside a building inside a closed container or you can say the inside a facility so initially there will be shock waves which will propagate in the structure and that will be the shock pressure phase because of that explosion this will be initial phase and the duration will be very small because it will go and then it will interact with the walls of the structure or internal surface of the structure so initial shock phase will be very small and that initial shock pressure phase is nothing but it is very similar to you can say either spherical or hemispherical conditions characterized by a sharp high pressure spike as we have already seen in our air blast phenomena so spherical or hemispherical conditions uh, depend upon the location of the explosive suppose if the explosive is located within the building not on a wall not on a particular surface then the situation will be spherical it can be idealized as a spherical or suppose if the explosion is happening on a particular wall or the explosive is uh, attached to a particular surface then it can be idealized as a hemispherical condition so like that different uh, locations of the explosive uh, will define what kind of conditions are occurring but when we were talking about the explosion in air it was assumed that there is no surrounding surface when we are talking about air explosion and for the purpose of idealization for the purpose of uh, development of equations uh the conditions can be assumed to be spherical so spherical waves will propagate out of that uh, explosion and then it will cause but but suppose if you are talking about the 
your bomb is kept on the ground surface and the explosion happens then the ideal thing will be to assume it as a hemispherical condition because then there is a surface your explosion is attached to a particular surface then you can take it as a hemispherical condition so that can also happen uh, in the open air if the bomb is on the surface but in the internal explosion uh, this becomes more uh, complicated sometimes and the shock phase will load the various surfaces that define the confined space for example if you are inside a room and explosion happens so shock wave will travel from the point of explosion and then it will go to the wall or window or door and then it will apply a particular pressure at that particular uh, surface which is confining the room and once it hits the surface there will be reflected shock wave because it is going to touch the surface so there will be some wave reflection shock reflection will be there and those reflected shocks will come back what will happen already there are shock waves present in the room and then there are more reflected waves which are coming in the room and those reflected waves will interact with the original shock waves and there will be a very complicated situation inside the room if there is an internal explosion there will be multiple reflections for example uh, it is very easy to understand suppose if we are speaking inside a, inside a, we are attending a meeting within a uh, empty room so sometimes we complain that we are uh, having the problem with echo we are listening multiple sounds on the uh, in the online meeting so that is a very basic example how the reflected waves interact with the incident waves but in the case of blast it will be much more complicated and it may cause more damage sometimes you never know how the reflected waves will interact with the uh, incident waves and sometimes the magnitude of pressure may become very high as compared to the open air explosion and that uh, becomes uh, very complicated but we will try to understand slowly how the things happen and uh, how uh, we should take care of such cases so this is a very simple idealized diagram so here you see let me use my laser pointer this explosive charge which they have kept on a wall or surface so that's why you see the hemi spherical wave fronts which are originating from this location and then there are different pressure distributions on the ceiling on the wall on the floor so all those pressures are coming because of this incident shock and then there is a reflected shock as well which is coming and once we account for the reflected shock incident shock then there will be some kind of pressure distribution uh, which may require numerical modeling or some kind of uh, simplified uh, designer's approach to compute that uh, uh, what we say uh, um, uh, the loading and here it was axis of symmetry so maybe if we don't assume it as a ball so you can say it is showing the hemispherical part but it will be complete circle i just saw this is axis of symmetry so they have shown the half part of the structure so basically explosive charge was inside the structure and they are showing only the hemispherical part means half part of that uh, particular complete uh, spherical thing so but similar thing will be happening uh, beyond this axis of symmetry so but the basic idea is clear there are incident waves and reflected shock waves which will interact and cause some kind of pressure distribution uh, for which we need to design for example in this particular building there will be some kind of pressure distribution which will be coming to the floor so
so we need to design the foundation of this building considering these internal explosions do you understand so even the foundation design can be affected with this kind of uh, loading on the floor which is uh, very important to understand uh, even for the geotechnical engineers that uh, explosion loading how explosion loading can be important in such cases for uh, uh, changing the foundation which is very important to understand so reflected shock waves will propagate and interact with various other surfaces i already explained each such interaction will generate new reflected shock waves and the process will continue for a considerable time because these reflected shock waves will again come and <coughs> will again come and hit the another surface so there will be multiple reflections so for example if i explain in a more intuitive way in a artistic way so let me use my pen so for example consider this room this explosive charge so incident wave is going like this and then reflected wave is coming starting like this suppose it is going and then it is hitting this surface and when it is hitting it will again reflect like this i am making very simple and uh, idealistic diagram but it will go in all the directions and then it will again move so this thing will keep on happening for a considerable amount of time and <coughs> sorry once this has been completed because slowly slowly there will be some pressure leakage some damage in the building so there will be some cracks because all of, because of all of them there will be some kind of uh, attenuation of all these waves and slowly slowly these waves will decay so but it will be present so this becomes uh, now you can appreciate how complicated may be the phenomenon and then there is a gas pressure phase high temperature gases expand into the confined space suppose this explosion is happening so there is some air inside this building so some and because of this explosion some gases will also be produced and then there will be a temperature rise because because of this explosion that energy will also cause in that rise of the temperature so because of all that high temperature gases will be there which will expand into the confined space and that will cause a new type of pressure phenomena that will also be present there and that will be the gas pressure phase gas pressure decays to ambient pressure due to gas leakage or due to the cooling of the hot gases obviously with passage of time there will be as i explained there may be some cracks or there may be some small openings or suppose windows are shattered so the gases will leak out of that open window or cracked window so there will be some leakage of that gases because of the gases are venting out it is going out so suddenly uh, so certainly there will be cooling of hot gases and the gas gas pressure phase will also decay so uh, and the duration of gas pressure phase is considerably longer and that's why sometimes it is also considered as quasi static or you can say pseudo static because it is happening for a longer time so here you see the over pressure time history of internal explosion so till now you saw the over pressure time history of external explosion so that was idealized something like that some rise time and then like decay and then it is going to the negative phase something like that so generally that was the case of air blast that we saw but when we talk about uh, the internal explosion it is quite different compared to the uh, inter uh, air explosion so now we will understand so this is this pg that you see is the gas pressure phase 
and this initial peak is coming due to the initial shock phase and then there are these multiple peaks that you see are due to the multiple reflections which i just explained and this medium thing that you see that is the gas phase pressure profile that is coming on this part so that's how different kind of phases different kind of reflections different kind of shocks are present and that's why internal explosion phenomena becomes even more complicated compared to the air blast now how do we idealize for example we have idealized our if uh, maybe i can quickly show to the students who have you now just joined so it will be a good idea here to explain this thing so when i was explaining the air explosion uh, i gave an exercise to uh, because you were not present there most of you were not present there so i gave an exercise to idealize the okay. so here you see that this uh, dotted thing so dotted thing is also idealized i will not say that this is not idealized but it is uh, exponential and maybe in design industry sometimes it may be little complicated but still most of the researchers in their research they use the exponential idealization but in the industry linear idealization is preferred so exponential curve can be idealized by a linear curve based on some conditions some equivalence so the equivalence that i described there can be three types of equivalence this is first type this is second type this is third type first type of equivalence says that the area under the curve this dotted curve which is known as the specific impulse is equal for both the cases means for the uh, dotted curve also and for the green curve also if we can derive a green curve which has the same area uh, under the curve just as the exponential explosion then we can uh, say that that is a equivalent linear loop right so in this particular case for making a line we need two conditions so first condition is that area is same and second condition is coming that we are keeping the same peak over pressure in the two over pressure histories so with these two conditions we can derive our equivalent linear loop right so like that we have idealized now there are two more cases which i will explain in the recap lecture but just to give you an idea how do we idealize uh, i have shown this slide and this idealization is very important when we talk about the industry i will not say that uh, in research but maybe sometimes those people who are doing uh, some uh, research where blast is not very important but it has some contribution then those people can also do this uh, linear uh, idealization i agree but industry you will mostly find this kind of linear idealization so that's why similar idealization has been done in the case of uh, where it is gone in over in uh, yeah in these cases idealized over pressure time history of internal explosion that's how we idealize so there is a shock pressure phase which is like this and then there is a idealized case gas pressure so now the time is over i will explain all this in the next lecture and uh, till then uh, in between i will also plan to arrange for the uh, what we say uh, recap lecture for all those people to bring all of you on the same level so that's all for the day and uh, i wish you that uh, happy weekend and i hope that you should be able to complete matlab assignment so that we can also give the assignment for the nuclear loading and uh, as i suggested make your groups and please 
assign the work to each other because there are so many tables in the uh, in the in the FEMA. So try to do that, and uh, I think that should uh, be a good exercise and very interesting. And uh, work in a team. And if we can publish a paper, this will be one of the best class. <laughs> that one paper coming out of an entire class. So think in that way. I'm not saying that you have to do that. Maybe you can do that. Why should you uh, ignore the possibility of doing something great, right? So that's all from my side. And uh, I'm stopping the recording now. Stop recording.